They amuse us, upset us, and sometimes anger us. But that's why we love them. <laughs> oh, there is nothing more precious than a baby's laughter. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 controversial TV characters. For this list, we've chosen characters that were received negatively by some facet of society. These personalities run the gamut of offensiveness and are ranked by their cultural footprint in terms of popularity, notoriety, and influence. I don't think those two have 30 years between them. Polka dots looks like a lot of fun. We're only including fictional characters on this list. So Hitler from the exceptionally short-lived Heil Honey I'm Home will not make an appearance. What are you afraid of? Number 10, Jack Bauer, 24. <laughs> An anti-terrorist agent who's worked for various intelligence organizations, notably CTU, Jack Bauer is often thrown into life and death situations. That's a problem with people like you, George. You want results, but you never want to get your hands dirty. I'd start rolling up your sleeves. What's more, many of the tasks he performs in the line of duty are of questionable morality, including murder and torture. Considering 24 aired during the Abu Ghraib prison torture controversy, and counterterrorism was an ongoing issue at the time as well, the ethics of interrogation was a contentious issue, something not helped by Bauer's nationally televised atrocities. She died in agony, which is exactly what I'm gonna make you do. Unless you tell me what I wanna know. <laughs> Many people, especially human rights activists, chided these segments of the show, calling Bauer a torture propagandist. While his methods were questionable, Bauer saw them as a means to an end and the only way to save the day. What I want to know is the name <laughs> of the Russian pig inside your government that gave the order. Number nine, Beavis and Butthead, Beavis and Butthead. Let's become one of those stand-up chameleons and make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Money rules. Beavis and Butthead were the victims of youth emulation and media reproach. The characters, in all their irreverent glory, were delinquent, misanthropic, and borderline sociopathic, making sure they were hated by parents and loved by children. A dangerous combination. Oh, you bagged a jumbo jet. <laughs> Do I get to keep it? One child, allegedly imitating the duo's fascination with fire, burned down his home with his sister inside. Think the carpet will burn? <clears throat> Another child, after hearing Butthead mention sticking a firecracker inside a cat, did the exact same thing. <laughs> Go for it, Beavis. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be cool. <laughs> However, the legitimacy of claims that the characters were to blame has been debated. Whatever the case may be, controversy followed Beavis and Butthead like a shadow. Not everybody can be cool like us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. Tom and Helen Willis, the Jeffersons. Uh oh, more bad news. What the <laughs> As a white man married to a black woman, Tom and Helen Willis were among TV's first interracial couples. Considering the Jeffersons premiered less than a decade after anti race mixing laws were abolished, some people were not receptive to that level of integration on national television, with Louise Jefferson often voicing the antiquated views of such a demographic. It was one of them fancy honkies only party. <laughs> you call me a lot of things, George, but you've never called me a honky before. <laughs> Are you going to? Oh, you're just a token. It speaks to the likability of the show that this controversy was not long-standing, as the Jeffersons was beloved for its racial honesty and humor. And the Willises became fan favorites. Let me tell you one thing. No, let me tell you one thing. Go ahead. One of your eyelashes is coming off. <laughs> humor is one of the best devices for quelling racial tension, and this couple certainly helped break down barriers on TV. Dumb little careful, Tom. That's right, don't use that word in my bathroom. <laughs> He said it. No, he did not. He's a Don't you say it. <laughs> Number seven, Don Draper, Mad Men. I don't know if I have enough food. Bertie, what do you put in that freezer I bought you? Frozen food. What do you want me to say? As an advertising executive in the 1960s, Don Draper is the epitome of masculinity, for better or worse. Such a standard is impossible to hold without collateral damage, however. 
as Draper's lifestyle is fraught with adultery, alcoholism, and grossly inappropriate conduct towards women. Speaking of which, who's your little friend here? Oh, she's a new girl. For this reason, Mad Men has been on the receiving end of controversy for its alleged misogynistic overtones and sexist treatment of female characters. It's your job! I give you money, you give me ideas. And you never say thank you! That's what the money is for! While he's by no means a good role model, Don Draper is true to his time period and his character. And as the saying goes, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Advertising is based on one thing, happiness. Number six, Murphy Brown, Murphy Brown. I think I'm pregnant. What? I said I th I heard you the first time. What's wrong with you? It's fairly shocking in hindsight, but Murphy Brown was the subject of significant controversy in her day, specifically because she was a single mother. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Running around with two guys having unprotected sex in the 90s? Whoa, a little credit here. I was not running around with two guys. I was with one man, one man, one time. During 1992's presidential campaign, then U.S. Vice President Dan Quayle delivered a speech about family values, wherein he singled out Murphy Brown, a career woman who carried and raised a child without a man, for contributing to the decay of society. It doesn't help matters when primetime TV has Murphy Brown, a character who supposedly epitomizes today's intelligent, highly paid professional woman, mocking the importance of fathers by bearing a child alone and calling it just another lifestyle choice. In the 90s television landscape and beyond, Murphy Brown was considered a pillar of feminism, partly for her independent lifestyle. And this rubbed some people, even major politicians, the wrong way. But did Murphy and her creators take this lying down? No way. They tackled Quayle's comments head on. Perhaps it's time for the vice president to expand his definition and recognize that whether by choice or circumstance, Families come in all shapes and sizes, and ultimately, what really defines a family is commitment, caring, and love. Number five, Al Bundy married with children. I don't know what to get your mother. Maybe you're being a girl will come in handy for once. Married with children was a spoof on the traditional sitcom. Every standard rule was abolished in exchange for satirical freedom which ruffled the feathers of many a situation comedy viewer. Uh, let's see the Japanese build a better one of those. <laughs> but no character was freer in their debauchery than the head of the Bundy household, Al, an exaggerated male stereotype full of lust, beer, and crudity. An anti-obscenity advocate launched a campaign to boycott the show, which ultimately worked for a time. What's your cup size? Oh, like, uh... Uh, oh, miss, uh, excuse me, C could you help us out here a minute? In the end, the Fox series sponsors ended up paying much closer attention to the content, leaving an episode entitled I'll See You in Court unaired due to scandalous content. I want to have sex on the kitchen table. <laughs> I want to have a meal on the kitchen table. <laughs> the bad press ended up working in the show's favor, however, with Al winning the war and married with children returning to its trademark irreverence. Once again, I finish first. <laughs> Number four, Ren and Stimpy, The Ren and Stimpy Show. Let's see what you got in there. One, two, three. When a kid's series is so dirty that an adult version of the show has to be created just to facilitate the jokes, then you've got one untamable beast on your hands. The indecent acts of the eponymous Ren and Stimpy are the stuff of legend. My chicken and my best friend! Gulkers in the dark! The Nickelodeon series is full of adult jokes, sexual innuendos, and incredibly dark subject matter, with no educational value whatsoever. And the creators knew that from the get-go. It don't stop! It's working! As you can imagine, the censors were perpetually tested by the content. Combine all that with the character's ambiguous sexuality, and you can only loosely call this a kid's show. Or probably not at all. Number three, Dexter Morgan. Dexter. Tonight's the night. And it's going to happen again and again. 
has to happen. Dexter Morgan's brand of justice is morally gray at best. Seemingly a normal man on the outside, Dexter has murderous tendencies on the inside. I'm gonna have to let you go. Because of this, he lives by a code, only killing those who deserve it, mostly. See, I can't help myself either. Children, I could never do that, not like you, never. Unlike the other characters on this list that are only superficially controversial, Dexter's controversy has real-life implications. The serial killer character has spawned copycats in the real world. In fact, seven murder victims can be connected to Dexter, including a mother who was killed by her Dexter-obsessed son, an oil field worker who was killed in a Dexter-inspired murder room, and a girl who was dismembered by her boyfriend in a Dexter imitation. Unfortunately, it seems like Dexter is to spree killers what the catcher in the rye is to assassins. I did her. How? In a movie. It's not film. But I'm not sorry. Of course not. <laughs> no, I'm not sorry either. Number two, Eric Cartman, South Park. What kind of costume is that? It's Adolf Hitler costume. Yee ha! Yee ha! Though Bart Simpson was the original obscene cartoon child. Viagra at $5 a pill? Whatever it is, it's going in Skinner's coffee. When Eric Cartman stepped onto the scene, everyone had a new authorita to respect. There aren't enough terms of bigotry to describe Cartman's personality, so we'll just let him speak for himself. So, when I say, es is sight to slobbering, you all chant back, we müssen die Juden ausrotten. An adult character spouting the same hateful rhetoric would be bad enough, but coming from an eight-year-old child, it's almost demonic. It's common knowledge that South Park has received opposition from decency groups for possibly inciting prejudice, and Cartman is almost always the catalyst. Don't cross this bad boy or else he'll make you eat your parents. Nya, 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 nya. I made you eat your parents. Nya, 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 nya. Jesus Christ, dude. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I gotta get to work on so you won't hear the word fruit out of him. Huh? Uh, bye, Bert. <laughs> the part of me really wants to have the baby, and part of me... Huh? You saying I queered that guy's tire? I'd say race it some loquitur if I thought you knew what it meant. I don't... Hey! Ipsa this, you pissy little bitch! Number one, Archie Bunker, all in the family. Archie, if there's no personal contact, there's no danger of further infection. Oh, that's with regular James. And Pollock, Bugsy, yours are too dumb. When looking through today's politically correct lens, it'd be easy to see Archie Bunker as an abominable character. He's a staunch conservative whose views on social issues are archaic even for the time period in which he lives. Ever since that fight your father and Maud had one Christmas, when she caught him drawing horns and a mustache on a picture of President Roosevelt. Quick with a racist or misogynistic quip, the patriarch of 704 Hauser Street is flat out abrasive, originally designed by creator Norman Lear to be hated by audiences. Last night I'd done maybe the dumbest thing in my whole life. Are you sure you've lived a long time? <laughs> but hated he was not. Because of Archie's sincerity and his apparent, though often repressed heart of gold, viewers were able to look past his bigotry, helping him to inspire future controversial characters like Eric Cartman and become one of the best-loved TV characters of all time. There's something to be said for honest convictions. I'm against all the right things. <laughs> Welfare, busing, a women's lib. I think sex education should be took out of the schools and put right back where I learned it in the streets. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite controversial TV character? Wait, 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 Lois, Lois, don't move. Stewie's loving this. <laughs> oh, see if she's got any cash on it. For more shocking top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I feel so much better about being Jewish now that I see that Mel Gibson is just a big wacko douche. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs>